Next at five, a vandal hit several businesses in Flagler County. The common thread between the victims that has some believing they were targeted. And the daughter of the man killed at a gas station now begging for answers what she knows about his death three weeks later as she continues her search for justice. And a quick look at the cooler temperatures we're dealing with tonight, how long they're going to linger until the next warm up. Local, live, late breaking. West 2 News starts now. First at five, if you haven't had enough of the fall weather, the temperatures are about to dip here in yeah. Central Florida. <laughs> Too bad, basically. We're talking <laughs> about highs in the lower 60s tomorrow. We're going to see the lows, I think, mm -hmm. in the 40s. Let's get you over to Chief Meteorologist Tony Minofi right now. He's tracking the dip in degrees coming in hours. So, Tony, how low are we going to go? I tell you what, it depends on where you are. I think the farther north you go, you're in the lower 40s. The farther south and east you go back towards the coast, it'll be uh, likely in the 50s. And here's the reason why. We've had a front come on through. Big dome of high pressure now is on top of us. There will be high clouds, though moving on in after sunset that will slow the fall in the temperatures but they are going to fall in fact when your highs are only in the uh, the 60s to around 70 is a real good chance that you're going to drop back into the 40s and 50s as you get into late November and the winds they're fairly light and look at the direction now northwest that's a colder flow for us here in central Florida when we take a look now at that 12 hour forecast plenty of clouds here thickening on up overnight tonight temperatures will fall back here in town into the upper 40s 42 in ocala 45 the land 45 palm coast 49 50 titusville on into melbourne even colder wednesday morning we'll take a look at that here a little bit later on but look at these high temperatures tomorrow not even hitting 60 degrees up there in daytona beach so guys this is our florida winter for the next 48 hours and remember, our West News weather team is working around the clock to keep you up to date on any changes to our forecast. For the very latest details, download the West app and turn on the alerts for breaking updates. We do have some breaking news right now. Orange County deputies are trying to find a man who they say tried to rape a woman last night in her apartment. They released this video just about an hour ago, and it shows the man who followed the woman and pushed his way into her apartment near Alafaya Club Drive. This is the area just north of Waterford Lakes. A woman the woman fought off the man and then her roommate helped chase him away. We know it is hard to see his face in this video, but if for some reason you do recognize this man, deputies want you to call 911. The daughter of a military veteran is desperately trying to find who shot and killed her father at a gas station in Ocoee. This happened earlier this month at the BP gas station at the corner of Silver Star and Clark Roads. That's where West's Marley Martinez joins us live right now. So Marley, any leads on a shooter yet? We've reached out to police and are waiting to hear back. But what detectives have said is that the shooting happened right there near the very first gas pump. And today the victim came out to get the word out herself. Police are asking anyone with information to reach out to them or Crime Line. Live in Ocoee, Marley Martinez, West 2 News. Prison time for a former pro wrestling star, Tamara Sitch, known as Sunny back in her career, will serve nearly two decades in prison for DUI manslaughter. Sitch was arrested after the car she was driving slammed into a stopped car in Ormond Beach, killing 75-year-old Fran Lassiter in March of 2022. Police said that Sitch was more than three times the legal limit with an open bottle of vodka in the car. Sitch eventually pleaded no contest, and the state had hoped for 25 years in prison. Today, Lassiter's brother and daughter spoke about the loss for their entire family. He remained my father figure right up to his death. He filled the void of the loss of my father at a young age. His mission in life was to help each person be the best version of themselves. He wanted to bring joy and happiness and a sense of purpose to everyone he met. Sitch also spoke to the family apologizing for her actions while telling the judge she could turn her life around and talk about the perils of drinking and driving. The judge sentenced her to 17 and a half years in prison and eight years probation. Police say the suspect's actions were unacceptable and they're asking for help identifying him. Anyone with information is asked to call Flagler Beach Police. 
Now to the ceasefire in the Middle East. Israel and Hamas have now agreed to extend their truce by two more days. During this temporary pause in fighting, the U.S. has helped Israel negotiate the release of dozens of hostages. Hannah Siegel told the Today Show this morning her aunt is among those released. We didn't know anything. We, we don't know anything. You know, we knew, uh, we, we saw my aunt and uncle taken. There was a video, but... After that, you have no idea where they are, what kind of conditions they're in. Um, it's absolutely devastating. Now, Hannah says her aunt's husband is one of the remaining hostages in Hamas custody, and she is hoping he will be released soon. Meanwhile, tonight on NBC Nightly News, new details about the hostages who were released from Hamas custody. On Friday, this nine-year-old boy was released, and you can see him running back to his dad. The little boy and his mother and grandmother were released after 50 days in captivity. NBC Nightly News spoke with his aunt about how he's now adjusting. He's a normal kid, and we are trying to bring him back to normal life as quickly as possible. Now he has to, to calm down and to go, to go back to school with his friends and to be like a regular kid like he was on the 6th of October. The aunt there also talked about the living conditions for hostages in custody. You can watch the full report right here on West 2 and BC Nightly News airs at 630. Then, of course, stick around for more local news and weather on West News at 7. Memorial services are underway for former First Lady Rosalind Carter. Her motorcade left her small hometown in Georgia for the Jimmy Carter Presidential Library and Museum in Atlanta this morning, where she is now lying in repose. The motorcade traveled to the Rosalind Carter Health and Human Sciences Complex at Georgia Southwestern State University. Wraiths were laid at the complex to honor the former First Lady. The procession then continued on to the Carter Presidential Library. The wife of former President Jimmy Carter died last week. At the age of 96, two days after entering hospice care at home. And right now, members of the public are able to pay their respects during the repose service in the Carter Presidential Library. President Biden and First Lady are expected to travel to Atlanta for tomorrow's public service. Former President Jimmy Carter is also expected to attend. A private funeral service will then be held on Wednesday. Now to Commitment 2024, Ron DeSantis is hoping to gather support from a newly formed super PAC called Fight Right. A memo sent to DeSantis supporters said he will meet with people financing that super PAC. It says the group's contributions would go directly to TV ads and work with another pro-DeSantis organization called Never Back Down. Watch News is your home for political coverage leading up to the 2024 presidential election. You can learn where candidates stand on important issues and find the latest polls on air and online at WESH.com. New York Representative George Santos says he expects to be expelled from Congress. Now, this comes after a report from the House Ethics Committee found evidence that he broke the law. The chairman of the committee introduced a resolution just last week to expel Santos once they came back from Thanksgiving break. No word to shed on when or if it will actually go through. We'll keep you posted. Up next, though, the Florida bill that could save lives. Our state ranks high when it comes to child drownings, and now there's a proposed solution that lawmakers will consider. Plus, three students with Palestinian roots shot in Vermont. Tonight, we hear from one victim's mother who says her husband's efforts to keep their son safe failed. And a recall impacting some of the most popular cars on the market. The problem with hundreds of thousands of Honda vehicles. Closed captioning brought to you by National Floors Direct. Throughout the nation, Florida is known for its natural beauty, beaches, mm -hmm. lakes. But sadly, nationwide, Florida is also known for having the highest number of drowning deaths for young children. The state of Florida is now considering a bill that would provide free swim lessons to many families. As West Jews Michelle Meredith reports, it has the full support of a Longwood couple who continue to use the pain of losing their child to help save the lives of others. Now, the bill does not indicate how many lessons would be free or if they would stop before a child learned how to swim or learned survival techniques. An organization that offers support to the LGBTQ plus community is celebrating 24 years in Orlando. Mayor Buddy Dyer shared this photo today with the Center Orlando. He says the center has helped shape a more inclusive, welcoming city for decades. The nonprofit formed back in 1978 under the name Gay Community Services and offered a safe space for meetups. It has since been renamed and expanded to offer health services, a food pantry, and mental health resources as well. 
Over in Volusia County, Deltona City Commissioners will consider a moratorium on new small box discount stores for 120 days. Some residents have complained about too many chains like Dollar Tree and Dollar General opening stores in the area, and they say they'd rather see more restaurants and other stores. Tonight's meeting starts at 630 at City Hall. All right, Tony, before we were all admiring the clear blue skies, <laughs> now the sun's starting to set. It is quite lovely outside. Those temperatures about to fall, though. Yeah, you know, the sun sets early this time of yeah, year. Yeah. 507. So beautiful. it is. Let me take you back outside right now. I'll give you a sunset over wow. there in Melbourne looking right good. now. Yeah, over towards uh, Brevard County. Looking pretty good tonight. Uh, the satellite radar perspective here shows what's going on. Two distinctive fronts. One passed on through this morning. Another one not going to make it on in. It's going across the Great Lakes and creating a lot of lake effect snow at this hour. We take a look at the satellite and the radar. A lot of high clouds going by. A, a thicker veil of clouds will begin to move in well after sunset and that will then start to slow the fall in the temperatures but it's going to be chilly out the door tomorrow morning. 64 the land, Palm Coast, 69 Claremont, uh, back towards Palm Bay coming in at 72. The air is very, very dry, which means that those uh, temperatures in the 60s and low 70s will fall quickly between now and about 8 o'clock and then kind of level on off overnight tonight. North northwest wind here We're on the cooler side of high pressure, a normal high temperature. 76 degrees tomorrow, about 15 degrees cooler than the norm. 58 in Ocala, 62 on into Titusville. We take a look at the attractions, the festival of the holidays, 9 through noon in the 50s. 3 o'clock, maybe getting to 60 here in Orlando, down towards Epcot. This is our typical Florida winter day. We take a look at the setup here now for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. High pressure slides to the east, a warm front lifts on through Thursday night and Friday. For now, not seeing any rain along that warm front, but some showers may start to approach over the weekend as low pressure takes shape well off to our west. So winter's here. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, high of 61, Wednesday morning, 45, and Wednesday afternoon, 66. So no cool record highs and no record lows, but we're right where our winter values would typically be. In fact, Wednesday morning could be, we'll be watching this, could be some patchy frost up there in Marion County, 41 to land, 48 Titusville, and then on into Winter Haven right around 44 degrees. All right, to the weekend we head. Now there's a front, there's an area of low pressure, slow moving front. We get a south southwest wind, we stay warm. European computer model keeping the rain well to the north. GFS has some of that rain moving on in here over the weekend. So we'll have to watch over the next couple of days which model trend is trending in the right direction. Wednesday, Thursday, there's your turnaround day. Three nights of uh, readings in the 40s, then we're in the 80s. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Watch the news at five returns here in just a minute. This first warning weather update is sponsored by the Law Offices of Dan Newland Injury Attorneys. All right, it is also the season to share your Christmas, and we want to talk about Lake County. This year, we're coming to Claremont to collect food for Second Harvest Food Bank and the dozens of food pantries they support in Lake County. Come see us on Friday, December 8th. We will be broadcasting from the Lake County Sheriff's Office South Lake Substation on State Road 50. We will be there collecting your non-perishable food donations from 6 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. All right, we have more news coming up at 5.30, including the shelves wiped bare. A senior pet facility is in trouble after thieves got a hold of hundreds of pounds of pet food. Also, a five-year-old girl has died after a car accident involving a police truck. What happened here at this intersection that ended up taking her life? It's the season for caring. It's the season for sharing. It's the season to share your Christmas. Your help is vital to local families struggling with food insecurity. Join West 2 and Second Harvest Food Bank for the 38th annual Share Your Christmas, December 8th. Go to West.com to find one of our six drop-off locations across Central Florida. Or make an immediate impact with our virtual food drive on West.com. So get ready to share your Christmas. West 2 News continues. 
A five-year-old girl has died after a crash involving a police sergeant who was heading to an emergency. Yeah, that crash happened on US 92 in Havendale Boulevard. Well, she's Megan Mulatto spoke with the Polk County Sheriff who says the sergeant was actually on his way to help a deputy who had called for backup. We did reach out to the family and the Auburndale Police Department for comment, but have not yet heard back. A pest control and lawn service worker in Polk County is accused of exposing himself to at least two customers. 27-year-old Tyler Mountain is in jail after the sheriff's office says two women reported him in separate situations at their homes. Mountain was fired from Massey Services following the complaints. Detectives believe, though, that there may be more victims out there. They're asking anyone with information to give them a call. Today, Hamas released 11 more hostages, bringing the total to more than 50 over the past four days. This is Israel and the militant group agreed to extend their current pause in fighting for another two days. West News Christopher Salas is in our Washington bureau right now with whether there were any Americans in this latest hostage release. The Florida Strawberry Festival has released its final headliner for the 2024 concert series. Country music star Cody Johnson will perform on Sunday, March 10th. Tickets go on sale next Thursday. Other concert headlines next year include the Beach Boys and the Black Eyed Peas. The Florida Strawberry Festival runs February 29th through March 10th in Plant City. Princess Cruises is looking ahead to this day next year. The Caribbean Princess will embark on its first ever voyage from Port Canaveral. The cruise will go to Turks and Caicos on a four-day trip. Tickets are on sale for now for the next season's voyages. New at 5, Jennifer Lopez announced a new album and a new movie coming out next year. J-Lo's album called This Is Me Now will be released February 16th, coming more than two decades after her 2002 smash album This Is Me Then. She will also star in This Is Me Now, the film, which gives fans an inside look at her personal life and romance with her husband, Ben Affleck. You've probably seen the ads all over TV and your email. Retailers big and small offering Cyber Monday and extended Black Friday deals. How they start to the holiday shopping season is shaping up so far. And there's one airline now calling it quits from the airport in Melbourne because of low demand. Tony? And I tell you what, waking up uh, on into Wednesday morning, check this out. We may be dealing with the season's first frost here in central Florida. I'll tell you some of the elements that could uh, preclude that from happening when uh, we return here in just a couple minutes. Closed captioning is sponsored by your local Toyota dealers. WESH 2 News, now here for you at 7 p.m. We are adding more coverage on your schedule. Central Florida's biggest stories and the most accurate forecast. It's right here, right now. WESH 2 News at 7 p.m. Developing news, the TSA says it hit a new record for holiday travel during the Thanksgiving weekend. That's right. Yesterday, TSA screened close to 3 million people at airports Ooh. across the country. That is an agency record, the busiest day ever for air travel. The holiday travel rush at Orlando International Airport will linger until tomorrow. Airport officials predict 179,000 travelers will pass through Orlando today. And listen to this. A Velo Air is ending its service at Melbourne Orlando International Airport. A Velo took its first flight out of Melbourne in June and says there's not enough demand to keep going. The low-cost airline says it will continue flying into the airport through January 6th. Those with trips booked past that date will be notified about their options for a refund or to be changed to a different flight from either Orlando International or Daytona Beach airports. Black Friday and Cyber Monday mean big business for retailers. Suji Nam with our South Florida sister station spoke with a consumer expert about the billions of dollars being spent over the last few days. West News is your home for the OUC Orlando Half Marathon. Yes, it is. <laughs> this <laughs> Saturday, guys, it's this Saturday, December 2nd, we're going to have live race day coverage starting on sunrise. Then at 7 a.m., we are going to bring you exclusive race coverage from across the 13.1-mile course in downtown Orlando. <laughs> I hear the last point one is the hardest. From elite runners <laughs> vying for the podium to our neighbors who are lacing up for the race. You will see them all on West 2 and on West.com for the first ever broadcast of the OUC Orlando Half Marathon. 
Marathon presented by Land Rover. This is your first time doing it. It a is. Birthday gift to yourself. Yes, okay. yes. Turning 40 <laughs> this week, so this will be my first half marathon. Tony, I've been using all the restraint I have in me to not ask you about the forecast <laughs> for Saturday. But are we close enough? Uh, yeah, we are. Okay. It's going to be a little warmer. Okay, but not about the afternoon. The race is at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it's going to be a little warmer. Oh. But what about yeah, rain? Days, I think. Well, that's in the morning, though. I think the humidity is going to be the problem for the runners. So oh, we, Lord. Yeah, My we, hair is going to be a nightmare. I, <laughs> Don't judge. May, Don't put you, me on TV. You may start the race <laughs> thinking about your hair, but I, but I think that's going to change during that, that 6.1. I got to find a wet hat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me take you guys back outside before we get in trouble here. Right, uh, first morning, well, that is a gorgeous looking uh, sunset shot. She's worried about her hair. I'm worried about it. her legs, her knees. <laughs> She's worried about her hair. Oh, my goodness. All right, a few clouds out there, but uh, overall not bad. There's that big dome of high pressure in the Caribbean over towards Cuba. Cuba. And for us here, though, we've got some high clouds filtering across the Gulf of Mexico. Temperature right now in the land down to 63 degrees, 70 in town, 69 Winter Haven, and 68 back towards Palm Bay. Northwesterly flow of air. We're going to keep those uh, breezes going overnight tonight. The attractions tomorrow. Good day to be there. Uh, no humidity, no heat. Uh, afternoon high temperatures. Again, right around that 60 degree. More clouds go by the waist here. Uh, Tuesday night on into Wednesday. Return for Thursday and Friday along this warm front. And that's when we start to look to the north and west. We think there's going to be a little more humidity around for that OUC race. Tuesday afternoon, 61. Wednesday morning, 45. No records there. And then Wednesday afternoon, uh, again, the cool record high is 50. We're not going to touch that. This will jump back up into the mid-60s. Wednesday morning, Ocala, 36, 45, in town, 48, back towards Titusville. Then we advance the graphic to Wednesday morning here in the Marion County. We think there is likely to be some patchy frost as we'll have some clear skies and some light winds. Heading on into the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, the rain will likely hold off, but it's going to be the humidity for those OUC runners that we're going to be watching. Uh, no tropical activity here as uh, now we're just four days removed to the end of the hurricane season. That is a beautiful Beautiful. That has a beautiful sound to it, doesn't it? All right, let's take a look now at your updated seven-day forecast here. Looking pretty good here. Rest of the work week, temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Rounded out with 82 on Friday. Look at that morning low temperature, 62. So Saturday morning now. For the runners, we're going to be in the upper 60s. That's going to be quite humid. By the time we get to the afternoon, maybe a couple of showers uh, well north and west of town, 84 degrees. And then on into Sunday, 85, a morning low of 70. Late Monday and Tuesday, we're looking at another cold front coming in Monday night and Tuesday, but another warm day. High temperature on Monday right around 83 degrees and overnight low temperature again near 70. So again, Saturday morning for OUC, we're going to be very close to 70 degrees. All right, Tony, if giving back is on your holiday to-do list, West Chew is making it easy for you. Yes, we are. West Chew's Share Your Christmas campaign is back for its 38th year. And tomorrow, Giving Tuesday, we are hoping that you will join us for our day-long telethon and online donation drive, raising money for Second Harvest Food Bank. Now, all that money we raise, it's going to stay right here in Central Florida, providing food and meals for children, seniors, and families who are barely getting by right now. So please join us tomorrow on air and online at West.com to donate. Merriam-Webster's word of the year is authentic. The dictionary says it's on increase in online searches for authentic this year, fueled by conversations about artificial intelligence and its role in society. So that means that the word moist is not 2023's word of the year. Mm -hmm. So we told you earlier this month, Kraft sent a huge jar of mayo to Merriam-Webster's headquarters. The brand wanted to make moist the word of the year because it's, quote, Delicious, smooth, and luscious, just like Kraft Real <laughs> Mayo. Uh, well, it didn't work. Oh, well. It didn't work, but it did get us to read that story on TV. I think that was probably the point. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Swifties will soon be able to watch the record-breaking era's tour from the comfort of their own homes. That's right. An extended version of the Taylor Swift concert film will be available to rent online starting December 13th on the singer's birthday. Now, the extended version includes three more songs, which were cut from the movies shown in theaters. Fans will be able to rent it via Amazon Prime Video, 
Apple, Vudu, Xfinity, YouTube TV, and Google TV. It's basically everywhere. It costs $19.89 <laughs> in honor of Swift's birth year and the title of her album. My goddaughter is going to be... Oh, really? She's not going to be able to control herself. Go nuts herself. for yes, this? She goes nuts for anything Swifty. It, so. I also like how it's always like everything has a meaning. Like mm -hmm. the price of this has mm -hmm. a meaning. They put so much thought into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Washington News at 6, straight ahead. Yeah, here's what is coming up in the next half hour here in West 2. We continue following breaking news out of Orange County. Right now, deputies are looking for a man who pushed his way into a woman's apartment and then tried to sexually attack her. Plus, sentencing day, a former pro wrestling star learns her fate after crowd after causing a deadly crash while under the influence. We have reaction next at 6. Closed captioning is sponsored by your local Toyota dealers.